Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's roundtable geeky land geek land investing panel, we've got Tate Litchfield from hey, FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. The Land Guru, Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Mike, what's your website? TheLandGuru.com. TheLandGuru.com. I know you guys haven't heard of him, but uh, he's Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from <laughs> scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott, you got a big bat there. I'm scared. It's my mini bat. I'm ready to hit some home runs. Awesome. Awesome. Shh. We also have on the panel <laughs> David Banalis, the Facebook whisperer. <laughs> David, what's your website? Simplelifeland.com. Simple Life land.com and of course we always have to have like the hipster in the group the guy with the, like the cool guitar in the back you know eric peterson from landopia.com let's just get into it guys let's just get into it we, we're coming off of boot camp um and we noticed a theme of pricing mistakes so the biggest pricing mistake was like somehow it's not getting uh, conveyed properly the way that we're marketing our land and our pricing. So Scott, do you want to kind of explain what you're seeing, what the, the mistake was? Yeah, I think what everybody wants to do is like everybody wants cash deals. And look, I want cash too. I really like cash. Okay. I don't. But I also like I terms, terms deals. Yeah. I don't want. Yeah, but you you got to have balance, right? Like you got to have cash to keep the the business. Well, I'll, I'll the sell the note. I'll sell twelve months of that note, and I'll get my money out. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, so here's the deal. What we saw was that people are rushing to talk about the cash price first. So they're you know when you ask them like, hey, how much is land? Oh, it's uh twelve thousand nine hundred cash, and uh, we'll do you know like you know three grand on terms, and this amount per month, and I think that that's the wrong approach because 75% of your buyers are looking for terms deals. And when you throw out a large number at them, like 12,000, 10,000, $20,000, they're, they're like, like, they've gone deaf. It's like when I tell Mark, like, Hey Mark, uh, how many deals have you done last year? He's like, I can't hear you anymore. That's the same thing that happens when, uh, when you pre present cash first, the way to lead into the price is the most irresistible part of it. What is it? It's a hundred dollars a month. It's one hundred fifty dollars a month. It's a thousand dollars down. Right. Make I mean, it let's ask Tay. Like Tay, when you go to the car dealership, I was just going to say, what do they talk to you about? They talk to you about financing because, well, they assume that I can't afford that uh, Bentley or whatever it is I'm supposed to be driving. But uh, yeah, I mean, they make it attractive. Anybody who's struggling with this simply needs to turn on the TV and watch as many car commercials as possible. Because what do they do? They take an asset. It's very expensive, much like a lot of the properties that we sell. And what do they do? They make it affordable for everyone. Right. They say it's owner financed or however they're going to do it. They make it irresistible. And as a result, everybody's driving around a car that you know, they're making monthly payments on. If we take that same approach to our pricing of our property, why won't we have the same results? Right, right. Let's, let's take a contrarian approach though, right? So... A good example is Mike Zano, the land guru, right? He's wholesaling. So he's only doing cash. So Mike, are you ever offering terms? On wholesale, no, but um, we do do some cash deals and, and I completely agree with what, what we're talking about. If you can own land for the price you spend on uh, coffee per month, then how is that not irresistible? You know, same amount of cost you to go to Dunkin' Donuts every day. You can have a five acre or a two acre or a one acre piece of property. That's irresistible. So yes, wholesale, no, I, there's no terms there. It's just irresistible because it's an awesome price. But um, in terms of uh, regular sales, yeah, the, the, the monthly payment is where it's at. Right. David Benalis, when you're doing your, your you know, ninja-like Facebook postings, what are you talking about as far as pricing? Like, how are you pricing it oh david's uh frozen let's go to eric peterson eric what about you yes um so you know i guess i do a little bit of both to be completely honest i mean some ads i put out there i will focus on the cash price 
Other ads, I'll focus on the terms price. If I have someone on the phone, generally I'm gonna try and figure out um, by asking them directly, you know, if they wanna pay cash or terms and then give them the price accordingly. Um, now, that may not be the, the best way to handle it, but that's how I've done it up till now. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, there's that famous study, right? of the, the jam stores, the jelly stores, right? One, one store has 40 different jams and one other has a seven, right? The one that has 40 has twice the traffic, twice the traffic or three times the traffic is the one that only has seven jams. But guess who has twice the, the, uh, the sales? The one with seven. <laughs> the one with seven. And the, re the, one the, one, the reason with seven is because the, the consumer is less confused about making that choice, right? If you're giving too many choices, too many options, and this even goes for financing, if you're giving five financing options and I'm giving one financing option, I might be flexible like a yogi as far as my financing, but when I'm doing my ad, I don't want to advertise five different financing options, right? You know, cash, three different ways to do terms, right? And then this, this, and this. It's just too confusing. So if we keep it simple with our pricing, you know, the studies, the, the science is there, you will increase your sales. Eric, do you agree? I think it's, it's definitely worth trying out and seeing if I just focus more on, you know, a single terms option and see what happens. Right, right. So Tay, when you're doing your pricing, how are you, you advertising it? So it depends on the ad. I mean, all... I'll advertise sometimes just the down payment. Sometimes I'll advertise the monthly payment. You know, for me, it's not so much about getting the price out there. It's about establishing that line of communication. And this is something Scott talks on all the time about how the purpose of an ad is to build your buyer's list and get somebody on the phone. And then it's also to close a deal, but it's impossible to close deals if your phone's not ringing. Right? So, I will try anything. Sometimes I'll leave pricing off. Sometimes I'll include a cash price versus a terms pricing. You know, realistically, I don't have a set format that I follow. I keep it fresh and mix it up on every single ad that I create. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, anything else you want to add to this? I think that's it. I think we covered it. I think we covered it. So, you know, the big takeaway then is keep your pricing simple and only have a terms price listed. Don't offer cash and terms and confuse your buyer, right? Um, even though, and, and also give the market what they want. You're not the market. Just because you want cash doesn't mean that's what the market wants, right? So, um, or if you need cash, put on your Zen Master Mike Zeno hat and wholesale the property, right? Or You're sell the note. Right? Sell the note. Or sell the note. I mean, that's what I would do, right? We should... So, we need to do a, uh, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a uh, master class on selling your note and cashing out. What do you think about that, Mark? I love the idea. I'm right, in. I'm doing it. I'm, in. I'm doing it. So David Benalis, um, you just had some technical difficulties, but I wanted to ask you when you're doing your Facebook postings, how are you posting the pricing? Uh, because I know 97% of the time it's going to be a terms deal. I am putting the, the monthly payment into the price. Um, people don't really care what the total price is. They want to know if they can afford it. So knowing your customer, you want to make it less than a car payment. And most of the time I'm closing deals, I think, you know, 150 a month, 125. That's kind of for my area. That's, that's the bread and butter, you know, 125 a month. You could, you could probably even do a buy sell group in like a, like a big auto dealership. Right. I yeah. don't know. Maybe <laughs> just, just brainstorming. Now you're thinking big, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, our second topic. Let's talk about David Benalis's issues, not psychological issues, because he's, he's solid. <laughs> I was a about septic to get tank it. issue. David, tell us what's going on with this deal. I was about to get my Freudian um, sofa chair <laughs> and talk about dreams I had when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. So I bought this property, uh, in like November, septic tank on it. Um, going back and forth with my seller. Um, 
I offered about a thousand two hundred, and he says, "Hey, well, it has a sick tank and it has a well." I was like, "Well, you know, let me look into that and you know, verify." Well, it didn't have a well, but permits showed that there was a completed septic tank on there. Completed. So I finished permit, signed off, and now I gave him the plat map. Uh, he cannot find the septic tank, so I'm starting to get a little anxious about this deal. Um, I sold it for I think it was eleven thousand on terms uh, because it had a septic tank. So now I have to contact a septic company to go do an inspect an inspection and find it. Uh, so if I was selling cash, I would have had to go through title, and, and an inspection would have been done. So it costs like four ninety nine. So I may be having to pay that now. So worst case the paperwork's wrong, it's the wrong property, and there's no septic tank, I have to go to my buyer and have a really interesting conversation about what the next steps could be. Um, learning lesson, I don't wanna buy anything that has improvements anymore. It's just a liability you now. Oh, come on, Dave, I think you're, I think you're, getting, you're getting improvement shy just on one deal. Uh, Eric well, Peterson, what are, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I mean, it's it's not a an ideal situation, but I I think that um, you can easily you know end up with a happy you know customer and and everything else as long as you're upfront about it. You know, um, I think even if you have to go to them and tell them, well, you know, there's no septic tank. I was told there was. I you know pulled these permits, all this stuff, and it's it's not there. Um, you know, offer them a refund and. Um, make him happy and you know maybe he'll want to keep the property give him a discount I mean I think there's a lot of options there to uh, to keep that customer happy and not you know burn a bridge if you will um, in terms of <laughs> the guy you bought that property from um, you know that's <laughs> that's not a fun situation to be in but uh, but I don't know I mean in terms of buying something with the improvements um, I've looked at property that have wells and things like that. Um, I've actually never made a purchase with something with a major improvement like that. Um, not specifically because of the improvement, but I tend not to place a lot of value on them. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, well, I'm buying the land, you know, if there's this well there, you know, you probably haven't used it for 10 years, even though it was dug and capped, like, what does that really mean? You know, is it even useful for someone to come in there and, and use it today? So I don't, I don't tend to place a lot of value on it. And maybe that's why I haven't bought one. So. Yeah. Mike Zana, what, is there anything you would have done differently on that deal as far as your due diligence up front? Yeah, I have a few thoughts on the due diligence. I definitely, if I'm going to pay extra for our market that it has something, I definitely would want to know for a hundred percent sure that it's there. But look, everything we say in the fight of in every instance about recovery, nothing goes smooth. It's just recovery. And it's how quickly you recover. That's important. And I think honesty and transparency is going to rule the day here for this deal. Um, you, you know, you're going to have to basically, if it's $500 to get someone out there, then it's $500. And if this guy backs out, then you'll, and there is a septic tank there, then you'll be able to sell it to the next guy for 11 grand. Or if there is no septic tank there, then if there's enough margin there, then you just give them a discount. Uh, it's all about recovery, honesty, transparency. In the beginning, yeah, I, I mean, I have people now that's telling me there's a septic on a property I'm going to buy. I'm like, so what? That sounds like a liability. Like, and then if it wasn't a liability on, a, on the sell side, I mean, I'll use that as a liability honestly, in my negotiation to buy it cheaper, but then I'll flip around and if it ends up being good, that'll be a positive on the sales side, but you got to investigate it clearly. Listen, Larry. I like that, David. What do you think? I like that a lot. Um, what would I have done differently on this deal? You know, I probably would have told my seller, you know what, it's going to cost me 500 to get inspected, but split the cost at least. Yeah, so that's, that's a total that Kate Litchfield move. <laughs> oh, Tate, let's feel Tate, what would you have done on that deal knowing tate like you were like okay it's gonna be five hundred dollars so i offered you five thousand so I'll, you know it's now thirty five hundred <laughs> like the guy's like what that's like, probably yeah, what i would have done like my labor is involved and i've got to make some, call, some calls and i have know. to have my i have to type an email to my va and have them call <laughs> people and you know no i would have done something similar to that david actually i would have split the cost with them um, I'm not opposed to buying properties with improvements. Um, but 
yeah, I mean, you got to do a little bit more digging on them. It's not, uh, it's not, you know, a 15 minute due diligence process on those ones, because like, like Zeno said, I mean, it could be a little bit of a liability, but uh, on the sell side, some of the best properties that we've sold have, you know, minor improvements on them, which bring the value of those properties up fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So uh, you're going to be able to recover from this. No, no biggie. I mean, don't lose sleep over. It's 500 bucks. Your margins are good. You bought it at the right price. If anything, you're going to add value to this property right now. So I wouldn't stress it. Yeah. You know, um, this kind of reminds me of like the McLaughlin group. Do you guys remember the McLaughlin group? I'm now I'm aging myself. Yeah. That's They're like I the political even, group. Never even heard of them. Yeah. Sky, you remember the McLaughlin group, John McLaughlin? Hmm. He'd have no. a panel and like, he, he was like really aggressive. He'd be like, Jack Jamond, what's your <laughs> thoughts from the Baltimore Sun? Eleanor, gee, I think I'll swallow. What do you want to do here? So, spot on. Is there anything that you would have done differently in this deal? Uh, uh, You've got two okay. seconds to answer. And we're going to go over here. Of course, I'm getting oh, the bat out. The bat's bat out. out. So, oh, the no. bat, the, Look, David, so um, I hear this all the time. Like people are like, ah, oh, it's got a cell, uh, a, a septic tank on it. It's got a well on it. Uh, and I'm like, and? Okay, like, is that supposed to impress me? Like literally hardcore. <laughs> and see, the thing is, is that I think too many people are, are concerned about trying to impress their sellers when in fact the sellers are selling. They should be impressing you, right? So like, yeah, it's got a well on a septic tank. Oh, man. Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a train wreck. Why is that? Oh, well, when was the last time the well was fired up? When was the last time the well was inspected? What about the septic tank? Do you know what kind of environmental issues uh, are all around septic tanks? It's terrible. So then, what, so then you spin it, right? So now I don't pay anything more for, for those pieces. Right. I don't it's care kind of what those, they are say. Are those your dogs? Unfortunately. I, and I got to really? be nice to them. I don't know. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Let me yell at them. All right. There, I yelled at them saying, <laughs> they, they don't listen. They, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's David, like don't pay anymore. I, it's only one dog. It's literally one dog barking. Uh -oh. I can't, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's not a zoo. It's just one dog. And I don't even know what she's yelling about. But David, don't put any more like value on it. Spin it like it's a negative. And then, you know, like you said, if you were going to close with title, you'd have to get it inspected. Not unless you requested that, okay? Awesome. Awesome. All right. I've got another topic to discuss besides Scott's dogs. And it's, it's like the good news, bad news topic in our business. It's like this, it's like the secret little, um, you know, positive or negative depending where you're coming from. And we don't talk about it. I don't think enough. And that's defaults, right? Tate gets the down payment. He's managing it with geekpay.io. It's automated via ACH and credit card. See how I put that plug in? geekpay.io, the only automated financial CRM in the country. Anyways, he's got it automated with geekpay.io and then the person calls up and says, Tate, I can't afford the property anymore, right? What percentage, Tate, of those people make that call or shoot that email out? And then what is your reaction to it? You know, that's a really good question. Done a couple hundred deals and I would say our default rate is relatively small i'd say probably about 10 to 12 percent of okay. those notes will fall out and that's over you know the entire life of the the note um so you know like the the example you just uh stated so i would say a majority of the people fall off the face of the earth and they just kind of go rogue on us and never make another payment don't respond to emails text messages phone calls nothing but right. occasionally somebody will call and they'll you know, be a proactive buyer and they'll say, listen, something's come up. I'm not interested in the property and anymore. I can't afford it. The first thing I always try to do is renegotiate the deal. You know, I want to keep them on as a client, especially if they've been on for a while and made their payments on time, that kind of thing. So if I have to renegotiate it, it's worth doing. But the example I had yesterday was a guy called up. He got into, he got into problems with the law. And uh, basically, he won't have access to his bank account from jail. So um, he told me, like, listen, I'm going to default. I was like, so what do you want to do? He's like, I just want to avoid the contract I want out before I go into the big house. No problem. 
<laughs> Look at right. the Facebook whisperer's face right there. He's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so we uh, went ahead and signed the documents and uh, he's out of it. As soon as it ended, guess what I did, Mark? Marketed it. I marketed it. I texted a few people. And uh, this morning I woke up to an email saying that the down payment had been made. So the best part is I resold it for more money on better terms to a better buyer. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that's, that's the beauty of the defaults. Um, Mike Zeno, I know you're, you're more cash, but have you had this experience? Yeah. In fact, recently I sold a property about a year ago. I bought it for 500. Uh, I sold it for 59.95 on terms, 295 down. They pay $99 a month for about a year and then they wanted to cash out. So they sent me, I, I made a deal with them. They're sending me a check right now for $3,000 on top of what they already paid. So I don't have a problem with it. I love it. Well, I mean, that's a, that's not a default, Mike. That's like, Oh no, they're paying well, they off early. Well, they stopped paying for a couple of months. So that's how it came about. Yeah. So they did the fall. Oh, you months poor and, and, guy. They stopped paying for a couple of months <laughs> and then they uh, had to write me a big check. Well, it's all communication. I'm a good communicator. I'm okay with defaults, Mark. <laughs> it tastes, tastes like the opposite of you, Mike. He's like, okay, bye. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh, you can't make your bill? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, maybe I'll give you $5 off next month. Will that help? <laughs> uh, if you can't pay your bill, you're going to – that bill goes up every day they miss. You know, they got to pay all kinds of fees. Uh, Eric Peterson, what's your default rate? And how do you handle it? Uh, it's pretty low. I – I've actually never had someone call me and tell me they can't make a payment. Instead, you know, kind of like Tate was describing, they just disappear. You can't, no matter what you do, you can't reach them. And, uh, you know, then when the time comes, you just take the property back and remarket it. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal, really. Um, you know, if anything, it's, it's extra money in your pocket in most cases. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I think I've had maybe three, something like that. I mean, not many. Wow. How's geekpay.io working for you? I mean, I think that's lowering defaults for sure. Yeah, it's, it's working awesome. Um, you know, uh, getting everything updated with the, the switch to Actum has been a little bit of work. Um, you know, I've got a decent number of notes in there that I had to go through and, and change. But, uh, you know, I think it's it's working very well. Awesome. Awesome. David Benalis, what's your default rate and how do you handle it? I don't think I have enough uh, with sample size to have a default rate, but I have one default right now. Uh, so it was three properties that were actually kind of tough to move uh, last December and guy made a down payment and then payment number one and partial of number two, but missed three and missed four. I sent the 30 days notice about two weeks ago. So I got two more weeks before I can officially tear up the contract. Um, the one property I'm really looking forward to getting back. It was really attractive, like kind of sloped, beautiful. I might even keep it for myself. The others were a little tough to move, so um, yeah, I'm ready for the challenge. I'll resell them. Not a problem. Put it on Facebook. Maybe sell. It. Might take me as much as four hours, Mark, to sell those properties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I ever want to have a default, like let's say I've got a really nice property that I really want to keep, but I just want somebody kind of paying on it, I'll have a super low down payment and a super low monthly payment because those people are typically worse borrowers. Like they don't have a lot of skin in the game. They'll make five months worth of payments, right? I might take my wife out to eat that, those week, those months with that money. They'll default, just redo it, you know? And it just goes on forever, right? It's like I'm attracting the worst possible borrower. No credit checks, bad credit, come to me, right? <laughs> Put a dollar down, right? <laughs> and so that's, you know, if only on those situations. Um, it's really rare when it's super, super low like that, that they actually pay off. It's almost like I'm attracting the worst possible buyer possible. Yeah. But you one know, of properties, one of these properties I'll be selling for the third time now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we had that. So I know um, Scott Todd's got an amazing story, but I also like Scott's um, collection philosophy. So I'm going to unmute Scott and the dogs. Here we go. 
I found the problem with the dogs, by the way. We've taken care of it. It's quiet now. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, by the way, uh, I'm worried for the dogs now. <laughs> that, that's 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 not there's no pretty, dogs yeah. harmed in the the recording of this podcast, okay? So don't worry about that. All right. Okay, so Mark, the uh today actually I'm out at lunch and I get a uh, an email from a guy and says, Hey, I can no longer keep this property. And you know, at first I was like, Yes. Okay, great. Oh man, he paid every month on time for the last 17. He paid for 17 months in a row. So he paid 100 a month for 17 months. Plus he paid uh, $500 down. I mean, I couldn't get a more perfect buyer than that, right? I mean, I only right. paid 2800 for this property. 2800 minus 2200. That means I've only got $600 left in this 40 acre property that as soon as he signs the release today, I'll be uh, resending that back out to my buyers list as a foreclosure special. Hey, we had to take this back. And uh, maybe I might even do like what you're saying, like a super low down payment, carry on where he left off $100 a month. And I'll get it right back at the full retail price. Or maybe I'll do 150 a month because the pricing there has changed a little bit. But something just super, super simple you know, 250 down instead on a 40 acre, you know, I'll break my, my mold. I'll get a cash infusion today, zero refund. I'm super excited about it and uh, can't wait to have that play out today. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what I do with my collections yeah. though is, I, you know, like, like Eric's like saying like, Hey, I, I'm trying to contact them. They disappeared. I'm thinking to myself, that's too much work. So what I do is um, basically when they miss their payment, when they're five days late, they get an e email from us saying that, hey, you're five days late and your late payment is now $25. On day 30, so they're 30 days late, what I will do is I will send them an email that says, hey, um, notice the default. We haven't received a payment in 30, uh, 30 plus days. You have 30 days to, to solve this problem. If not, you lose interest in the property. And we email that to them and we mail it to them and we just wait. When you mail then, it, do you do a certified letter or do you use regular no, mail? Regular mail. Regular mail mail. And, and email. And the and way then, you can do that is with your land contract stating, this is how stating. we're going to notify you. Yeah. That's right. And then what happens is um, what I do is I don't even, we don't even mail like, so what we'll do, what we'll do is we will email to click to mail the letter that we want them to print. And at the same time, we're copying the buyer on it. So the buyer's getting a copy of it. Click to mail is getting it. So they print it and mail it under their email to mail system. And so we're not necessarily like folding anything up, printing it out. It, it's all in one, all together. And then from there, what we'll do is we will um, just wait. We set a timer 30 days later. We send them an email that says your interest in the property is gone. This, this, uh, an email only, by the way. A, uh, this, this, um, your interest is, is, or this land sale contract is terminated. Sorry, it couldn't work out. Best of luck. Goodbye. And we put it back for sale. And I follow the foreclosure model, which means I blast out to my email list saying, Hey, foreclosure opportunity, pick up where the last buyer left off. So I really think that, um, if you email me that whole, your whole email process, we're going to add that into geek pay and just completely automate it for you because click to mail has an API. So you'll just, you'll just click, you know, for closure notice and then it'll just do it. How do you like that? Well, I was actually putting that on the roadmap for LG pass too. So we oh, can and LG pass, yeah. It. So it could be in both. Perfect. Yeah. We can figure out which one doesn't. Um, awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I thought this round table was, was pretty meaty. Pretty meaty. David Benalis, meaty enough for you? Uh, it was totally vegan and meaty for me. All right. So, David, <laughs> should, I, should I go Facebook Live right now with Ecamm as we do tips of the week? Hey, if you can, if you can do both, let's try it. Okay, I mean, you want to try it? Let's experiment. Is, is anyone love, camera shy right now? Ecamm. You don't think I can do it, Scott? Oh, I love Ecamm. I think you do it. Oh, okay. I think I, you can do it like, with Zoom. Let me see. It says your name. And registered email address, because there is a update. Maybe I shouldn't do it right now, because registration wasn't found. All right, that's I'll fine. I'll I'll, uh, I'll take this one to Ecamm and rebroadcast it, so people okay. will see it. All right, cool. I mean, I'm I'm recording it, so I could always like edit it and just be like, hey, 
It's cool. So let's go around and as is Land Geek podcast tradition, put Tate Litchfield on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. We got to give Tate a, a, a nickname, by the way, Big Papa. <laughs> I love it when you call me Big Papa. I Tate's due in July. I thought that was gone. I thought I kind of like that got swept under the rug. All right. So Big Papa Tate, what's your tip? So uh, everybody knows I'm always uh, looking for new ways to collect money and payments. And so uh, we talk about, you know, Geek Pay because it's fantastic. You've got the down payment uh, feature on there. You've got Stripe. Um, some of you have heard of Venmo, but the newest one that I'm liking is called Cash. It's an app. It's super simple. The way it works is both parties would need to download it. Mark, I'll send you an invoice via Cash after this call. Okay. <laughs> You just plug in your uh, card information and you can transfer money. Simple as that. It's very similar to like the setup that Facebook is using to collect down payments. And uh, the best part is it takes only one to two days for the money to appear in your account. So no, it's not instant like Stripe, but uh, it's another method and another resource for collecting that initial investment. So uh, for me, I'm always, I want to provide as many options as possible. So if you're not using cash, it's great. It's also really nice if you're out to dinner with somebody and you want to split the tab or if this person's trying to get the Marriott rewards points, um, you can always divide it up and send them, pay them via cash or Venmo. You like this better than Venmo? I don't know. I, I like Venmo a lot because you can send emojis um, as like reason why you paid, but uh you know, cash is working well. All right. I love it. Cash. If we'll, nothing uh, else, link. it's another option, right? It's all it's about another, Yeah, it's another option. I, I love it. Now, you know, with geekpay.io, we do collect down payments. Yeah, and that's preferred yeah. because it's, you know, in an instant, you got your money right then and there. But some people I, are hesitant, so. Yeah, Scott, I, think, I think Tate might be thinking about this the wrong way, too. You could, I've bought land uh, using cash. Yeah. Yeah, I bought land doing it. Um, so, so, it's, like so it's, you almost think it's preferable as the buyer. I tell them, hey, send me, send me this and download this app and I, you, I'll have you the cash in, in your bank account today. And if they pay the 1% fee it, on their end, it will literally be in their account instantly. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, T, we could do that instead of doing the lob. No, it works great. I mean, cash is, uh, there's a lot of options here and it's just a matter of getting creative with it. Wow, that's pretty cool. Pretty geeky. Indeed. So um, let's go to Mike, Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno, what's your tip of the week? <laughs> uh, just for managing VAs and creating a list for them to learn how to do their job, we've been using workflowy.com. Workflowy.com. I love it. I've seen Workflowy and it's great. Awesome. Yeah. I just put the link in there. Yeah, it works great, out well. Uh, you tips. Basically, uh, give them an easy process to follow. And uh, I believe it's free, isn't it? Or no? I didn't pay for it. You didn't pay for it. Sure. Um, you know who also uses it? Evan Williams, founder of uh, Medium, Twitter, and Blogger. Uses wow. Workflowy. Great tip. Pretty geeky, Mike Zeno. I try. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, I thought you were gonna like quote some Zen master, but uh, this is great. <laughs> it surprises all around. I love it. All right, let's go to Eric Peterson. Eric, what's your tip of the week? All right, today it's going to be Alfred for the Mac. Um, it's a, it's kind of a automation slash uh, spotlight improvement. Um, app. Okay. So, um, you know, you can use it for things like shortcut keys to open up apps. You can write custom workflows. Um, you can do things like, you know, type in screensaver to turn on your screensaver or force quit to force quit an app or, you know, various things like that. So now why like not it. launch bar, which I think competes with Alfred? Um, I'm just not familiar with it. I don't know. I've used Alfred for a long time before that Quicksilver, um, mm -hmm. very similar tool. Um, so 
Yeah, I, I went from Quicksilver to Launch Bar, but maybe okay. I, I should check out Alfred. Yeah. Very good tip. Very good tip. Uh, David Banalis, the Facebook whisperer. We're going to give Eric, gonna give the Eric a, a nickname. <laughs> What's Eric's nickname going to be? Mr. Cool. He is kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> Man, come on. Look at that guitar in the background. Like Even the, the song sheets even open to like the most difficult riff, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you only knew. <laughs> I'm going to just put a violin in the back next time. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about Southern Charm? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> No, so, I don't know. So here's my here's here's my tip of the week. Okay. All right. Uh, you, you, everyone knows I'm refocused on my buyers list. So I found this cool extension. Uh, it's for Chrome. It might be for other browsers. It's called ListGoal.com. ListGoal.com. So yeah, every time I open a new tab, it reminds me how many people are on my buyers list, and how many I need to get to for my next goal. I love it. It's, it. yeah, every time I'm open, like, oh, man, I got to build my buyer's list. Oh, man, got to build my buyer's list. Fantastic. List school Chrome extension. Um, it's just listschool.com. I think so, yes. Yeah. All right. If it's not, I'll clarify it in the, the show notes. Yeah, we'll have it in the show notes for sure. Let me just see. Yeah, list school. If you do, like, list school Chrome, yeah, grow your email list. Know what's happening. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's free. And it's free. Very cool. Wait, I know this guy. This is the guy from uh, Video Fruit. Video Fruit, totally. He's great. Brian somebody. I forget Pretty his cool. last name. I forget. Brian Harris or? That sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. All right, last. Well, he's not totally last, but he is in the, for the, for the round table. Scott Todd. What's All right. Your um, man, Mark. Okay, here's my tip. It's a ninja tip for you guys. Okay. All right. So we all, we all like to email our buyers list, right? And so we, we email it and a certain percentage will not open our emails. Right? Correct. It just happens. Okay. So what I've been doing is I, I use uh, ConvertKit. And what Convert, ConvertKit allows me to do is it allows me to remail to the unopens. And so basically I'm remailing the exact same thing exact same email 48 hours later back out to them to the unopens and what's happening is i'm picking up another half of of whatever opened i'm getting another half of that to open it and take Ooh, action on it this is okay. phenomenal do i have to have convert kit to do this i don't know i i don't know how to do it with mailchimp i don't know how to do it with anything else all i know is this is i hit a button and i hit remail unopened and the exact thing, same thing co goes out. And literally, you know, like I've got, uh, I did a mailing the other day. I had a 48% open rate, leaving 52%. I did a remail to the unopens and I got another, I got 26% additional opens. So and my total wait, opens. You wait two days though. You don't do it. I wait two days. You wait two days. I do wait two days, but I mean, maybe there's not a right or wrong number. Great tip. Remailing the unopened. Remailing oh. the unopened. Fantastic. Well, my tip of the week is a new service that is coming out because Tate can, uh, can we'll agree with this. I think everybody will agree. Uh, raise your hand if you don't like hiring, training, and getting VAs up and going in your business. Pain point, right? So there's this new site called vas.thelandgeek.com. You can subscribe today to get on the VIP list. And when it rolls out, you can just press a button and start with a trained VA. Pretty good. David Benalis, you like that? I love your tips of the week, Mark. <laughs> my, my, next week, my tip of the week is go to <laughs> simplelifeplan.com. <laughs> All right. But I love it. I love it. Yeah. VAs are a huge pain point in this business. And if yeah, we I mean, can get I mean, off I mean, on I mean, the first be, be, To be fair, David, I mean, simplelifeland.com is for a very small niche of people. VAs.com yeah. <laughs> is solving some real pain. That's right? true. That's a very good, very good All tip. Right. I mean, <laughs> so... <laughs> I love maybe, it. <laughs> maybe I just changed the name of it to uh, Land 
investing trained VAs.com. The VA geek.com. You know, I get VA VA's dot the com. The VA geek.com. The VA geek.com. I don't know. Eric Peterson. What do you think? I don't know. You can stick with your theme and go with uh, geek VA, right? Geek VA. Yeah, absolutely. For geek Look, VAs. Geek VAs. Um, you, you know, but it's interesting because I'm, I'm, you know, re listening to the 22 immutable laws of marketing and you don't want to do line extension. So Scott's shaking his head. Like, yeah, we're going to have to change that name to something See, about I, outside of, of land geek. I, I'm, I'm doing uh VA moto.com. <laughs> it's a different brand. It is. It is. So, and I will take the word. What's what word should I dominate? For the marketing into the mind train va train land investing va i'm gonna own it i don't know all right i want to thank you guys for uh being on the on the round table um before we go around and and do our final thing um i just want to uh thank all the listeners and the only way we continue to get david and eric and scott and mike and tate to come on these round tables is if you subscribe, you've got to rate, you've got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit and uh, because it really, really helps. So Eric voxed me uh, today or this morning, and I thought it was great. So I want to play the vox for you guys to end the podcast. So I'm just going to click here on my voxer which takes me to Dropbox. I'm gonna open it in the app, come here, and it's loading. And now I'm going to press, I'm gonna make sure my volume's up. Do you guys hear that? It just automatically played. Hold on, let's hear it. We got order. One, two, three. <laughs> Again? Sorry, Scott. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> if you're looking for more systematized freedom in your life, go to thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land by Mistakes, and get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. Thanks, everybody, and uh... oh man, here it goes. <laughs> That is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we gotta do it better than Scott. We gotta do it better. All right, ready? One, <laughs> two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. This is why Eric took the time to make it. Let freedom ring. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody.